Um, I don't really have a good hunky anecdote, except that he owes me ten bucks. <laughs> um, and I'm happy about that. Um, so I'm going to read a thing, I guess, that was previously unreleased, called An Oral History of Benzedrine Use in the USA. <clears throat> oh, and I bought new shoes for the occasion, because Hunky was always so elegant, I thought I would strive for that theme. Oh. <laughs> okay. Go back to the 1930s, though it must have been discovered somewhere in the 20s. I'm almost sure. Start from, say, 32 undercover before 33. I know that. Benzedrine was then only known by a few nurses and doctors, students and universities, where they'd come in contact with science types and medical people and a few oddballs like myself. I grew up in Chicago, so say the University of Chicago. Someone would say, man, I have to cram for an exam and I'm exhausted. And someone would know someone who was a nurse with knowledge of this new thing called Benzedrine. Hey, why don't you get us a few bennies? Right away it was bennies. I'm guessing it started to spread <coughs> like that. Students in the know. I learned, about a lot, I learned a lot about amphetamine through them. Soon I learned that a lot of people who weren't who weren't of the underworld were piddling around with this stuff. One experience I had was one summer when I took a job as an elevator boy at the Illinois Athletic Club on Michigan Avenue in Chicago. A guy stepped into the elevator one night and asked me to buy him a bottle of pills. I think two dozen, 10 milligrams for about 89 cents. This guy was considered a great athlete and upper crust. I guess he figured I was only going to be there for a short time and that I wasn't likely going to squeal. Me, I could do a bottle at 20 to 25 in a period of about three days. It was a stimulating thing, as you know, and you could go for long periods doing things you liked without feeling exhausted. <laughs> I liked to talk. It was, it was a perfect talking drug. One used to stay up all night and end up at the jazz joints after hours. Life fascinated me no end. To end, up over, to end up over in the Black Belt in the south side of Chicago, there wasn't anything that knocked me out more. Everyone's complaint about it, though, at the beginning, was that it killed the sex drive. So many, so many stopped using after a short while. But okay, perseverance corrected that assumption. <laughs> See, in those days, people, people were uptight about sex. So psychologically, you know, one, once Benny kicked in, well, it teases you a little. Sure, it kind of encouraged the freakish aspect, so you had to let go, and when you got going, you could go for hours and hours. We found that it helped the sex drive. So that's how basic sexual discoveries began to come about, letting go in bed, and then afterward, being less embarrassed to talk about it. They just followed their inclinations. Benzedrine gets to the mind, too. I don't like to separate the mental from the physical. And while I was jumping around, I'd start thinking about things I'd never thought of before. Although it gave you all this energy, as I say, it didn't make you angry. One would simply pass out the stuff. What, no one needed to make a buck off it. One wasn't inclined to steal or anything like that. That wasn't the idea at all. You need a Benny? Here. I have ten. Here's three or four. We weren't so paranoid in those days. And I'd travel around with it, too, town to town, popping. I'd leave Chicago, and I could still buy without any problem. This was about the mid-30s. Of course, I kept myself well-groomed at all times, and while people didn't look down on the drugs so much yet, it always helps to have a good appearance. I think we should all keep that in mind. <laughs> um, once I ran into Toledo... Wait... Once I ran into Toledo and I had a problem getting some. It was obviously getting more popular and some drugstores were picking up on that. I had to buy caffeine tablets at that time and suffered from it. I got ill and could not talk well at all. If you start to feel trouble, of course you want to know what the trouble is, right? It still wasn't illegal, but it had come to the attention of many people because I think workers in the industrial areas and truck drivers were buying it more and more to keep alert on their jobs. I remember in the road stops, in the restroom stalls, seeing George the Benny King was here, or things like that. It was when they got hit to the pills and they became difficult to get that Smith, Klein, and French, who had a priority claim as benzedrine manufacturers in the U.S., 
To the best of my knowledge, they were located in Pennsylvania, if I recall. Well, they switched over to these nasal inhalers. These quickly became a big item in drug counters. It was put into a small metal container, later plastic, stuffed with some kind of gauze and rolled very tightly with not only benzedrine, but oil of lettuce and menthol and God knows what else. The problem was you not only got hooked on, on, amphi on amphetamines, but on this shit too. We used to share the inhalers sitting in a cafeteria with a cup of hot coffee. By the time you got up and walked out, you'd be a new man. They were very delightful, just euphoric. The world was beautiful. They didn't last for very long on the streets. They knew they had a problem almost immediately. Anslinger, who'd already ruined the pot scene, got on the ass of Benzedrine and got carried away with this new thing. Oh, we were going to get something to take... We were going to... Oh, we got something else to take care of now. Don't you know there were a lot of payoffs down the line in the process? The cops, who still didn't know what the fuck amphetamine was on into the 50s, didn't mind because after all, what was an inhaler when it came down to it? By 1939 or 1940, when I hit Times Square, bennies were illegal, but there were those of us who still managed. Over on 8th Avenue, there were a couple of drugstores tucked away that street people like myself, who hadn't tipped our mitts, used to get by. That's it. Um, I think Michael Imperioli's next. Thanks.